I will explain the best equipment for every hero whilst gemming them to maximum level in this video. How much will it cost? Let's find out. I am starting with the Barbarian King and the best piece of equipment right now is his epic giant gauntlet. Mine is level one, but what you pair this up with depends on the strategy that you're using. And I'll be going over all of that. I will also be unlocking and gemming to max the new frozen arrow for the archer queen but focusing on the king for the moment i can power through a bunch of these levels because i did stack the ore on this account which included some purchases and i will show the amount already spent on your screen whilst i am going to gem all of the best equipment to maximum level you want to be aware of upgrade thresholds where you get the biggest boost in stats this appears to be level 9 and level 15 notice here the active ability ability is also increased, not just the hero boosts itself. And that is something that I will discuss later. When you're selecting which hero equipment to use, it's important you take into account the active ability when you actually press to use it and the stats that are given to the hero throughout the attack. So as we move to level 15, you can see again an extra level to the ability duration. Since this is an epic piece of equipment, level 21 also gives you a big boost in stats. But the reason I mention this is because once you know which pieces of equipment you will pair together, you want to upgrade them evenly because you get a bigger boost in stats per ore for the lower levels. It's very much like what we used to do when we upgraded heroes in multiples of five for their old ability levels. Again, you notice when I went to level 21, I gained an extra second of the active ability duration. That will remain at 16 seconds until I get the gauntlet to maximum level of 27. You can clearly see see that the amount of ore for the stats I'm gaining right now is a lot more expensive. But that's just like anything in the game. Giant gauntlet to maxed level. But that is just the first piece of equipment. What should you pair that with? Let's have a word from our video sponsor before we move to the next. Thank you to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. Dragon City allows you to collect, hatch, and evolve close to 2,000 unique dragons. Like my favorite, the Fury Dragon. Construct your city with magical habitats, buildings, and decorations whilst engaging in PvP battles. This allows you to prove your strength versus other Dragon Masters in a 1v1 and dominate the league. Board. You could also put your skills and strategy to the test by completing quests and events. Play with like-minded people in an alliance to unlock exclusive rewards. Dragon City has over 450 million downloads. You can join them using my link in the description or scanning the QR code. This will give you some food, gold, and a red Neo Izumi dragon to get you started. Let's actually quickly unlock the Archer Queen's Frozen Arrow since the Lunar New Year event has started we get through the tutorial here we can go into the shop code judo is already entered let's get 6,000 dragon medals purchase successful fantastic trader shop and the frozen arrow we can purchase but let's stick to the barbarian king for the moment you might notice my rage vial is already maxed i gemmed some of the equipment when town hall 16 was first released but i'll still give you information on that whilst i am gemming the earthquake boots as well because to be honest i don't think the earthquake boots are as useful even at level one it will break the walls and a lot of the time that is what you're using the earthquake boots for remember whenever you're assessing any of the equipment you always want to look at what stats you gain from pressing the ability this is the active ability but also the stats that the hero gains throughout the entire attack this is the hero boosts so even if some equipment doesn't have a fantastic active ability it can actually still be a really useful piece of equipment because of the hero boosts and there's a perfect example once we get to the archer queen i want to reiterate those threshold levels of level 9 and 15 for common pieces of equipment because that's when you get
get the large jumps in stats. Now, with regards to the Earthquake Boots, it's not that it is not a good piece of equipment. Whenever you have a stacked core in the middle of the base, you can actually get really good damage because the active ability provides up to 50% damage on all of the surrounding buildings. It's just really hard to activate the ability in that perfect moment. If it goes off too early, you miss the value. Oh, we are out of glowy ore already. Wow. First things first, let's go to the trader shop. And with regular gems, let's purchase the starry, glowy, and shiny ore. Let's see how far that gets us. What? Not very far. We didn't even get enough glowy ore for that one upgrade. Before we get to using strictly gems, which is going to happen, I want to assure that I have done this as cost efficient as possible. But the event pass is brilliant value when it comes to all. Code Judo is in there, so we can go ahead and purchase it. That also gives us 1,000 of the red envelopes. I'm actually going to, for the purpose of the video, gem the event pass all of the way to the end. And what I will do in the interest of time is just collect all of the ore and dragon medal right now. That should hopefully keep me going a little bit longer, so back to the Earthquake Boots. Essentially, whilst it can be useful, I just think it's very situational and there is better equipment, such as the Rage Vial, which, as you saw, I already have maxed. And in a moment, we will also have the Earthquake Boots maxed. There we go, final level to level 18, which is the maxed for common equipment. So it's level 27 for epics and level 18 for common. Before we forget about the Rage vile though it is very good when you are diving the king into a compartment because it speeds him up and gives a greater damage increase this is paired phenomenally with the giant gauntlet because you get the splash damage from the gauntlet and the increased damage from the rage file you can wipe out entire sections of the base which can often be great to set up pathing for your queen charge one extra thing to talk about on the gauntlet is the self-healing per second. You could compare this in a way to the vamp stash. Let's start gemming it up to maximum level. There's a lot more healing with the vamp stash. This is only when the king actually strikes a building. And we are out of glowy ore yet again. Let's go ahead and purchase all of the glowy ore that we can using our dragon medals. That is it. And I can already see that will not get us far. But the vamp stash can be very good when you're walking the king around the outside of the base. So he's taking damage, but not enough damage for him to actually go down. Because all of the non-defensive buildings on the outside of the base allow the king to just keep healing back up. At level 15, we get an extra 50 healing per hit and that is already our glowy or almost gone as well as our shiny ore. In terms of the ore itself, the starry ore, obviously, it is the rarest, if you will. You need that to upgrade the epic pieces of equipment. But even though it's the rarest, it's not actually the most scarce. Where most players hit the bottleneck, as you've already seen in this video, is the glowy ore. I'm actually going to get all of the shiny ore that I can purchase here. Oh, wow, we can get a lot more, actually. Let's speed through the rest of our medals and then and I'll probably be able to get more after this. My point, though, was if you are spending any of your dragon medals on ore, the glowy ore is actually what you want to be purchasing first, since it is the most scarce, even though it's not the most rare. <laughs> Case and point. <laughs> Well, here we go. We're going to have to start using regular gems. Vamp stash to maximum level. Is that it for the Barbarian King? It is! The only one that I haven't talked about in terms of strategy is the Barbarian Puppet. Whilst everything is so new, you might choose to use the Barbarian Puppet because it was one of the abilities that had its levels automatically upgraded when the hero equipment was released. It is incredibly powerful if you are going to combine it with the old school 
single method of once you've pressed that king ability in the barbarian spawn, Grand Warden's Eternal Tome to keep them invisible whilst they power through the base. That still works very well. However, if you are diving into a compartment where there is clearly room for traps, you might not want to use the barbarian puppet because all of those barbarians can go down very easily to a giant bot. All in all, for the king though, in 95% of situations, I would use the giant gauntlet and the rage file. Only in those specific examples I gave you in the other pieces of equipment would I consider switching these out. When it comes to the archer queen though, you can switch things up quite a lot depending on the strategy you're using. For a lot of players, the invisibility vial is important. It's why I gemmed it to maximum level when Town Hall 16 was first released. It gives you a second life, if you will, when the queen's ability goes off. The archer puppet, much like the barbarian puppet for the king, was the base piece of equipment automatically upgraded for the queen. Looks like I am going to need some more of the shiny ore for this one, so I might as well get some more dragon medals. Let's get that 6,000 again. I'm going to be buying other things in the trader shop anyway, but for the purpose of this video, let's just stick to the shiny ore. I think I might actually need more dragon medals to get the other 21 packs of this, was it? Yeah, we might need just a couple more dragon medals. I can get 6,000 again? <laughs> How many times can I buy this? In the previous events, you could only purchase each of the offers twice. Go to shop. One, two, three. Three. That is all of the ore that I can get from the trader now. So we're on to regular gems. When it comes to the spawned units, in most situations, they're not that helpful and end up going down. It's only in rare instances they can run ahead of your archer queen to help tank for her. But that's in situations when you know there's not traps in the area. The main benefits are the health recovery and DPS increase, which you are about to see the maximum stats for once I have purchased some gems. Within the in-game shop, 14,000 gems is 100 Great British Pounds. However, if we go to store.supercell.com, you get 10% more for your purchase. And I can purchase this multiple times over. Let's go with five for the moment, but I'm assuming we will probably need more than that. You can still enter a creator's code here. So my code is judo. It helps to support the channel massively. We were talking about the hero boosts though. And with regards to those, the arch puppet provides the archer queen with the greatest dps increase other than the new frozen arrow at maximum level this means if you pair it with the frozen arrow your queen can rip through defenses so much faster and this can work well for a recall queen charge attack because you tend to charge your queen into one area to set up pathing but you don't charge her to the core of the base so you don't need the second life of the invisibility file but you get the double dps increase of the frozen arrow and the archer puppet to mean that it's a lot faster of a queen charge because since you're doing two of them if you will it is common to time fail on those super bowler attacks that is a prime example of how the active ability is not always why you're equipping a certain piece of gear for the archer puppets most of the time it is that dps increase but also the health recovery i'll talk about that more once we gem the frozen arrow another fantastic combination for the Archer Queen is the Giant Arrow and the Healer Puppet. My Giant Arrow is already max level because I have so much fun with that. Maybe we could get two drills. That's what happens with the Giant Arrow. It's so hard to use. But why I like to pair it alongside the Healer Puppet is you spawn healers with this gear. And a lot of the time when you use the Giant Arrow, you actually Activate that early in the attack so that you can easily line it up to take out some defenses, such as air defense in a dragon attack. This means that your giant arrow could snipe potentially two air defense and spawn the healers at the same time. Your queen could then walk down one side of the base and you have a mini queen charge because when you do get the healer puppet to maximum level, you can spawn up to three healers and their level is only one below maximum. There are other use cases of the giant arrow, but with the healer puppet specifically, I only tend to use this in that situation where I'm walking the queen down a flank in order to set up pathing, for example, in a super dragon attack. Whenever I do find 
find those bases where I can snipe air defense and utilize dragon attacks though, it's great to have my healer puppet maxed. And with this final level, that will get me to level 18. But with regards to the giant arrow, you can be a little bit more clever with that as well. Yes, you can snipe off the air defense as I mentioned, but they might not be positioned correctly in the base. It could be that you use the arrow to activate an invisibility tower by the town hall, and this means that you can send a battle blimp to sideswipe the town hall since the invis tower is gone. Typically in that scenario, if you are using the arrow near the town hall, there's major defenses there, so you will be weakening those, and sometimes people like to get clever and even take out some of them with lightning spells after the giant arrow. I will say though, on a lot of my lower level accounts, the giant arrow is the piece of equipment I upgrade first because it makes farming so much easier. I can fly it right through the base, hitting the dark elixir storage and even multiple drills en route. Personally though, I do a lot of queen charge attacks and for that, I would recommend the invisibility vial because you get that second life. And if you don't have the frozen arrow, the archer puppets. If you do have the frozen arrow, I would use this alongside the invisibility vial, but with one caution. The archer puppet gives your queen 440 health recovery. You might think, I have the invisibility vial selected, but your queen can still die through her ability if you're using it alongside the frozen arrow because she does not have that health recovery stat which is provided from the archer puppet. All things considered though, it just means you have to be a bit more careful with your spell management and your queen charges, especially around those high damage defenses, such as the Grand Warden Altar or the Monolith, you can easily lose your queen. Even with that caution, I still think the Frozen Arrow is the best piece of equipment for your Archer Queen, just like the epic giant gauntlet is for the Barbarian King. Every three levels of the Frozen Arrow, you get an extra five percentage slowdown that it deals. Now, this this is a passive ability, and that's something you need to be aware of. Active abilities, such as the invisibility vial, only occurs when you actually press the ability or it goes off automatically. Passive abilities, such as the frozen arrow, are active throughout the entire attack. So every time your queen fires, she is slowing down the defense or even clan castle troops that she's attacking. So passive abilities can often give you greater benefits. This is separate from the hero boost. Again, the hero boost is active throughout the entire attack, but it's important you know the difference between an active and a passive ability. Pretty straightforward, but you can obviously see why it makes the frozen arrow so effective. As we're going through the final couple of levels here, you might be thinking to yourself, Juno, you're about to run out of gems. Wow, we've still got to get the frozen arrow from level 19 to 27. I want to say I am going to need like another five of these. If I don't use them all in this video, I'll be gemming the next update anyway. So be sure to subscribe in order to see that alongside my sneak peek videos where I break down updates for you ahead of time. Five chest of gems delivered. Satisfying moment incoming. <laughs> Look at them count up. <laughs> Let's go. If you did not know, the gem conversion per ore is one gem per shiny ore, as nicely demonstrated here. Five gems per glowy ore, I guess, again, as nicely demonstrated here. And 35 gems per starry ore. So getting an epic piece of equipment from level one to level 27... is pretty expensive. Oh my goodness. 10,000 gems for this one level. What? And there was me saying that if I don't spend all of the gems in this video, I'd still have them to gem the update. But if you wanted to know how many gems it costs, if you have zero ore to go from level 26 to 27 of the frozen arrow, it is... 11,800 and... 50. Remember, for me, these are business expenses for the video. But that is your Archer Queen equipment maxed. Let's see if we've got enough gems for the Grand Warden. With regards to the Royal Champion, right now she only has two pieces of equipment. I maxed them both when it was released because the Seeking Shield pings through defenses and it can help you to one-shot certain defenses. That might be clutch when it comes to the end of your attack. And it goes without saying, the Royal Gem is important. It's 
It's the only gear you can equip, but it recovers the health of your royal champion. And when typically she's responsible for taking out defenses, you really need that. So there's no debating that right now, the best equipment for your royal champion is the Seeking Shield and Royal Gem. But what about the Grand Warden? We talked about level jumps earlier and the Eternal Tome basically goes up 0.1 second every couple of levels, but then at maximum level, you get 0.3 of a second. So if anything, this is the piece of common equipment to get the max level for the Warden. Plus, it is simply the best. You should always use the Eternal Tome, turning your troops immune. It can help you to get through the Town Hall and the Poison or dangerous areas of the base where typically your troops would go down incredibly fast. The thing is with the Grand Warden, his other base piece of equipment is the Life Gem. It is a passive ability. Any troops inside of its aura will be boosted in hit points. But this is only useful for a couple of strategies. One of them being the hybrid attack, the Hog Riders and the Miners. In order to help you get through areas that have heavy damage, such as scattershot compartments, the Life Gem is important because it boosts the hit points of the troops enough that you can place a healing spell and they won't get one-shotted. It can also be useful in Lava Loon attacks. It boosts the hit points of the balloons, so you can save the Warden ability until you really need it. For example, if you're going through the Town Hall, you can delay the ability and help the balloons get through the poison. And that example raises an interesting point on the equipment that I really like about it. It is not just dependent on the strategy, it also depends on how you play the strategy. So if you're not using the Lava Loon into the Town Hall, then you might not want to use the Life Gem. It's not a set it and forget it with the equipment where this combination is best for this strategy, and this combination is best for this strategy, and this combination is best for this strategy. That's actually why it's really hard to bring a definitive best equipment video because it all depends on the strategy you play and how you play it. But getting the Life Gem to maximum level gives me the option to use it in those strategies. I personally prefer the healing tone. That is because I like to use the Root Riders. So let me explain whilst I start gemming the Healing Tome. What I really like about the Healing Tome is its flexibility. Now think about the Root Riders. They are very high hit point troops, so they don't really benefit that much from the Life Gem because they're not going to get one-shotted by defenses anyway. However, with the Healing Tome, you will see once I get it to maximum level, you get 25 seconds of healing. Now, when you combine that with the Eternal Tome, which gives you 9.5 seconds of your troops being immune, that means that you should, with the Healing Tome, allow your troops to take damage. So I never use the Grand Warden's ability too early with my Root Rider attack. As a general rule of thumb, once your troops are 50% in health, you can activate the ability. They will be immune. So for the first 9.5 seconds, they are automatically automatically getting healed. They cannot take damage from defenses. This brings them up to roughly maximum hit points. And then for the next approximately 15 seconds, whilst they are taking damage, they are still being healed. So it works out to be just such a good combination. I was not expecting this. Oh my goodness. Okay, how many do I need? Let's go with four of them. I didn't think it was going to be this much, but such is life. Purchase delivered. Fantastic. You might be asking, like, why are you even gemming the equipment to maximum level? Well, one, it brings you, hopefully, an entertaining video, but I can also give you education on the best pieces of equipment at the same time. Secondly, I am going to use this account with maxed equipment for a couple of other videos. You'll see those coming up. Again, it's always nice at max level to see all of these stats being increased. So there we go. Healing Tome to level 18. I'm glad to have upgraded that on my main account because it's been hindering my Root Rider attacks, but I didn't want to upgrade it until the video. Now for the Rage Gem, this increases the damage output of your Grand Warden, whilst also not just increasing the DPS, but his attack speed as well. So the first example is whenever you are doing a Warden walk into Smash Attack. A lot of the time you have to be careful how much time you are taking taking with your Warden Walk, trying to get appropriate pathing whilst taking out defenses, but you don't want to time fail the attack. The Rage Gem is fantastic for that because it speeds up the Warden Walk so you can get the value you want 
faster. If you do use a rage spell in combination with the rage gem, they do not stack. You do not want to use the rage gem with armies where you're using a lot of rage spells. The prime example being an electro dragon attack. You are using rage spells with the electro dragons, so the rage gem is essentially doing nothing. But on top of that, with the electro dragons, you want buildings that they can chain through to defenses further away. And if the Grand Warden is attacking faster and taking down those buildings, not only are the Electro Dragons not able to chain through them, but it's constantly making them retarget, and we all know how slow the Electro Dragons are. However, keeping that in mind, this differs with a Super Archer Blimp attack. You commit your clone spells, your invisibility spells to get that huge value, and then you can finish off the base with Root Riders, Electro Titans, Super Barbarians, whatever the combination is, but the Rage Gem can be fantastic for that because you don't have Rage spells, and you've also spent a lot of time doing the Super Archer Blimp attack that, again, you don't want to time fail, so the Rage Gem can help prevent that. But this will get my Rage Gem and every piece of equipment to maximum level. Oh, can you believe it? Unable to purchase. Game account is not available. I've spent too much. They've locked me out for security reasons. <laughs> Will it let me purchase it here? Yes. Maxed level. That is your guide to the best use cases of every hero equipment and all of them gemmed to maxed. Thank you again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video.